In this episode, we're going to learn how to notch a tube by hand. We're going to learn how to do it fast. And we're going to learn why an expensive tube notcher doesn't save that much time. Hey fellow garage fabbers, I'm Aaron with Man Candy's Creations and welcome to the video I almost didn't make. Tube notching, also known as coping, saddling, or fish mouthing, is a topic that's been done to death on YouTube. And the existing videos are pretty good, so what's the point? If you're just joining Garage Fab, this channel focuses on making the most of tiny workspaces. Sometimes that means finding ways of getting a job done without buying a bulky tool. In this case, a tube notcher. The sad fact is, tools help produce quality work fast. And if you plan to fabricate professionally, you'll quickly realize how important fast really is. So, the ability to create a high quality notch fast, by hand, is extremely valuable. That, my friends, is why I decided to make my version of tube notching without a notcher. This is my tube notching drawer. It's full of templates I've made for every size and angle that I've made to date. I keep them color-coded for each size tube, and they're labeled for various angles, mostly 90 degrees, 45 degrees, and in between angles of 67.5 and 22.5 degrees. Any other angles are generally easily attained by fine-tuning one of those four angles with a flap disc. Let's cut a couple notches, and then we'll talk about how to make the templates. Today I'm working with one and a half inch tubing, so for me, that's the blue templates. Let's start with a 90 degree joint, so we'll grab the template marked 90 degrees and wrap it around the end we plan to notch. We can just hold it in place, but I'd suggest taping it. That'll allow it to slide around and twist, but it will free up a hand. To start, I'm going to create a clock mark on the tube. That's not important on this straight piece of tube, but if we were working with a pre-bent tube, we would need to know what position it needs to be in. Maybe like this, or maybe like this. We'll just make a mark where the two tubes touch. I like to extend that mark a bit, and you'll see why right now. If we slide our template down over the edge a little and line up our clock mark, we can check our angle and positioning before cutting. Again, kind of pointless for the straight tube. If all looks good, slide it back and trace around the template with a marking tool. The template's job is done until the next one. Now that we've got a guide, we can start cutting out the notch. A cutoff wheel can only cut straight lines, so right now our cutouts currently have a V-shape. Notice I didn't cut into the marker lines. We want to keep our lines visible until the very end. This V gets us most of the way there. If you're good at welding gaps, you could probably run with this, but not today. Today, we have pride. We'll create the curves with a 40 grit flap disc. The rounded edges of a slightly used flap disc will make it easier to create the curves. Again, being careful not to remove our marker lines. With the line still there, we can see how accurate our cut is. It could use a little more right there. Let's try it significantly better it looks great but we got one last step to prepare for welding we want to create a bevel all the way around the tube to allow for proper penetration for our welds to do that we'll grind the two peaks flat at 90 degrees to the tube and the two valleys at 45 degrees when we assemble we can see the channels our welds will lay in this one is ready to glue on Let's do a 45 degree notch, but now that we know what we're doing, we'll do this one so we can see how quick this process is.
A little under three minutes from start to finish. Making the template is about as easy as it gets. I buy $3 plastic folders from Walmart just for the material, which I use for templates I reuse a lot. Cut a strip of material long enough to completely wrap around the tube you're working on and wide enough to completely cover the notched section of a pipe that has already been notched, plus another inch or so for rigidity and for a place to put tape. Wrap the material around the tube that has been notched to the angle you desire. If possible, I'd recommend hiring a professional fabricator to cut a few notches in some scrap on their notcher. It shouldn't be that expensive, and you'll end up with precision notches to make your templates with. If you don't have a fabricator in your area, now is a good time to become a fabricator in your area. Seriously though, if you don't have access to a fabricator, in just a moment, I'll help you make your notches with just a marker, a ruler, and a grinder. With the plastic wrapped tightly around the tube, simply follow the contours of the notch with a marker. Remove the newly marked plastic and carefully cut on the lines you just made. Aside from labeling, the finishing touch I put on my templates is a line to indicate the front of the notch pipe. This allows you to line up the template on tubing that requires specific orientation. And with that, the template is ready to roll. All right, we've made some notches really fast without a notcher using a template. Then we made a template using a notch. <laughs> what the hell? How do you make the damn notch to make the template? This is where this video becomes just like every other notching video on YouTube. If you click out, you won't hurt my feelings. But if you haven't seen them, stick around. We're gonna figure out how to notch without a notcher right now. All right, let's start again with the 90 degree notch. We're gonna fit this inch and a half tube to this inch and a half tube. Actually, let's do it a uh, top view. Notice the gaps on either side. We're gonna close these gaps by removing some material from the center. Again, this is a straight piece, so position doesn't really matter, but let's pretend that it does. Actually, you know what? Let's say that we wanna hide the seam on the bottom. When we hold the tube in position, we're gonna make marks where the two tubes touch. So we're gonna make one mark here and one mark below where you guys can't see. These marks are the center of the notch that we're making. And since we're removing some of the material, let's make these marks about an inch long. Anything longer than a half inch is good. We'll explain why in a second. Now, if you look at the pipe at the end and hold it, so that the first marks are vertical from your point of view, which is right here and right here. We're going to make two more marks exactly perpendicular to the first two marks. Keep these two marks short so we can tell them apart from the first ones. The next marks will determine the depth of the notch. The depth is going to be approximately one quarter the diameter of the tube. In this case, one quarter of a 1.5 inch tube is three-eighths. So when we notch the tube, the sides of the tube should cover about a quarter of this tube. So why one quarter? If we're notching an inch and a half tube to fit another inch and a half tube, shouldn't the sides of that notch reach exactly halfway? In theory and mathematically, yes, but we're going to conserve a little material and save some time by skipping a step and preparing our tube for welding right from the beginning. Let me explain. This is a scrap piece of two inch tubing that I actually notched with a tubing notcher. And you'll notice that this point actually does reach the halfway point on the tube. The problem with that is this material right around the point is extremely thin. If you try to weld this, one, you're probably not even gonna succeed welding it, but if you do, this will be so fragile that it could just break off. So if you're just doing something decorative, maybe that's fine. You'll have a decent weld there and there. Uh, but if you're building a roll cage or something like that, you need good quality penetration. And this weld right here is going to be absolutely worthless. If you look, there's all this material that is paper thin at the point. So what we wanna do, we wanna get rid of all this material and get it down to the full thickness of the tube. Once we get rid of that, we have about one quarter the diameter of the tube. That said, if you thought tube notchers produced weld-ready notches, think again. There's trimming and beveling to do after the notcher is done with it. 
You should also know that there's setup time with a notcher. You still have to determine the angle you need, set the machine to that angle, and calculate where to make the cut, which can be extremely challenging at first. A tube notcher's value comes from repetitive notches in a production setting. Say you've got 30 plus identical notches to do. You can set the machine up once and run through them super fast. If you've got two or three notches to do and they're all different angles, you just might be able to save some time by doing it by hand. Continuing on. To form the notch, we're going to draw a line from the mark at the end of the tube up to the notch depth line, and then back down to the end again. We're drawing straight lines because, again, a cutoff wheel can only make straight cuts. Make the same marks on the other side, and we're ready to start cutting. When cutting, leave the marker lines intact and don't cut beyond the notch depth line. As long as the marker is still visible, we know we haven't cut too far. And as soon as the marker lines disappear, we lose reference. And in the next step, we have no way of knowing if we're making the notch too deep. The notch is taking shape again. Just like the beginning of this video, we're going to sculpt the notch with a rounded flap disc. Take your time on this part. We don't have the curved lines to guide us like we did after using the template, so we need to remove a tiny bit at a time and keep checking. This can take a lot of time, but that's okay. You want a perfect notch to make a perfect template. The more time you spend perfecting this notch, the more time you'll save in the future. Notching an angle is slightly different than the 90 degree notch, but the steps remain the same. Position the tube you're notching and mark the front and rear. With angled notches, you can save some time and material by setting the tube you're notching on the end of another tube. You'll see in a minute that this edge is already really close to finished. If you do this, you'll save yourself an extra cut, which will save you a minute or two. Not a big deal unless you're doing many notches, but it does make the next step easier. As for the mark in the rear, the tubes won't be touching on this one, but we know the rear mark will be directly across from the front mark. Mark the sides perpendicular to the first two marks. Determine the notch depth. On the angled notch, we can't measure a quarter of the tube's diameter away from the end, as we did with the 90 degree notch. Instead, if we imagine this lower tube continued all the way through the tube we're notching, the top of the tube would be the notch depth. If you've got a steady hand and a good eye, you can just eyeball it. I do not. You can also try and use a straight edge, but since we're marking a round object, that's also pretty challenging. So here's a quick fab tip I recently came up with. I learned that if I slide the Milwaukee marker I use on a table, it'll make a mark just shy of a quarter inch from the table. By the way, this works with Sharpie markers too. So if the marker creates a quarter inch on its own, I can set it on a quarter inch piece of metal to get a half inch. And if I set that on an inch piece of scrap, I get an inch and a half. With that in mind, marking this tube is cake. This is now our depth line. Remember in the 90 degree notch, we used a quarter of the diameter of the pipe to determine the depth, which was three eighths of an inch. On this one, from this line straight up to the depth of our notch is, look at that, three eighths of an inch. 
The depth line is way up on the back of the tube on this one, so we need to extend the rear mark to meet it. Here's a quick tip for drawing straight lines on a rounded surface. Set the tube and a marker on your table. Roll the tube until the mark you want to extend meets the marker tip. Hold the pipe steady and slide the marker on the table. All we need to do now is connect our lines like we did with the 90 degree notch. From here to our back mark, and then from here to our front mark, which is actually already done. We'll do this to the opposite side and we'll cut it out and see what it looks like. Our notch is most of the way there. Let's sculpt it a little bit with the flap disc and see what we get. Bevel for welding. That's two notches down and ready to make some templates. And with that, it brings us to the end of this video. If you guys wanna see more of how I do things in this tiny little garage, hit the subscribe button. We got a lot of things going on. It's a lot of fun. We got the truck build going on behind me, some suspension basics videos, and the tips and tricks. I'm having a good time. I hope to see you in the next one, and until then, my friends, keep moving forward.